The PWR presents What If? What if John Cena turned heel? What if China became the first woman world heavyweight champion? What if Owen Hart never passed away? What if Magnum TA never got into a car crash? What if Hulk Hogan stayed with the AWA? What if Shawn Michaels signed with WCW? What if WCW won the Monday Night Wars? What if Vince McMahon's WrestleMania failed? What if... <laughs> What's going on there, Reflection Nights? <laughs> what is going on there to the High Me Nights, the Fido Ice, the PWC Ice, all the Ice out there, the Magnificent Seven, the Elite Eight, the Naughty Nine, the Terrific Ten. I haven't said that in a long ass time. <laughs> And I haven't laughed like this so devilishly, so cleverly in a long, long time because I've been trying to think of a subject to change the course of professional wrestling history, to change it for the better, to change. Oh God, not with the goddamn fireworks! Jesus Christ, you ruined the model. You ruined it, damn you! You ruined it. I'm like Vince McMahon. You ruined it. You know, you know, only Josh Froberg only liked that shit. But anyway, I'm gonna get into my spiel here, my diatribe here because you know. I guess now from from now till infinity and beyond, it's gonna be the PWR thumbs up show. It's all about thumbs. You like thumbs up your ass? Give me a thumbs up. Oh, you got one now. And we got two. <laughs> the thumbs up the ass show. But anyway, it's not that. <laughs> it's the PWR podcast here at the Hami Media Group at Podbean.com. And we are changing wrestling history. It is the most popular series on the PWR catalog, and we haven't done it in a while because I try to find a good subject. The PWR What If Special. But before we even talk about and get into it in depth, I must introduce myself because I am vain like that. I must introduce myself because, you know, I got grays on my chin right now. So when I introduce myself, I get a little bit younger or I just go and shave it off. But anyway, neither here nor there. I am the most charismatic one. I am the most affluent one. God damn it, I'm trying to do the goddamn intro, man. Shut up. I am the most Oh, so glorious one. The only objective man in this IWC, YWC, PWC, country. The only objective man in this political hemisphere. The, only, the one and only, the Professor Chabel Bell Cruz. And I'm not here alone. No, 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 no. I'm not here with not only my brother from another mother, but I'm here with the executive producer extraordinaire himself, too. And I got to introduce two people now. I'm not introducing one, so I'm going to introduce the first one, our special guest. He didn't do the JD on me. He did not abandon the professor. He said he slid into the DMs. No diddy. He said, professor, I got your back. I will be on the show. I will not do a JD. I'll not do a prodigal one right now. I will be here for the brothers. I will be here for the family. And right now, he is here, live and in living color. He is the planet of the people, the man with the plan, the host of the Next Level Wrestling Podcast, and soon to be the co-host of the Raw Review Special with Jimmy T on the Hami Media Group, Channel Attitude and YouTube, and all that stuff. Ray Hernandez. What's going on, my friend? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Wow, it's been many, many years since I've been on this show, man, I mean, uh, you guys well, know, many, you guys, many, many months, but yeah, you know, it's been yeah. years, dude. When's no. the last time I did the show with you guys? Christmas time. That's yes. bullshit. Was it Christmas time? Yeah, you did a what if with us. Well, I've been wanting to ask this question, and you know, since I, I have the the whole gimmick soundboard and everything like this, I wanted mm-hmm. to ask Tommy a question because you know I love Tommy one. Tommy, he's one of my favorite people, and of course, the professor and all the all, all the magnificent seven out there in the elite eight, and the uh, what is it? Uh, the naughty nine. The, uh, the 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 
Buckley uh, 14, whatever you call him. But, um, but I, Tommy, I, I have one question. I've been holding this. I saved this one soundbite just for you. It's a question I think all the Reflection Knights want to know. Here it is. Why are you gay? Who says you're gay? gay? You are gay. So, um, <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, that was more than one question. I was I was I was working the morning shift and I love talking old school wrestling. So I'm excited to do this with you guys, man. But um, I'm also excited to hang out with you guys. It's been a while since me and Professor and it's been never with Tommy Wonder. So, Professor, I need you to do me a favor, though. What's that? We know that, you know, we know that Tommy Wonder is uh, he's a little out there, you know. Yeah. Stop with the thumbs, Tommy. Stop it. Would you you stop with it? I shouldn't even be talking. Don't worry, you're not even talk. Don't worry. I, I just need you to. We, we you need you to help me wrangle this son of a bitch in when he starts drinking. You know. Uh-huh. I know he's like. Isn't he like Irish? Yes. And and now the thumbs coming up, and now he's more Irish than ever. But, it, but anyway, right. neither here nor there. But I must introduce my brother from another brother. You know what? Now I'm gonna have to call him Tommy Two Thumbs right now. But anyway, he's the conservative liberal, liberal conservative. Dum dum doing idiot song, the iron stomach one, Mr. Wonderful, and the man who has his thumb up his ass to get fireworks out of it too. Well, not only that, but he is the Detroit Rock City Universal Heavyweight Champion of the World. Tommy Wonder and TW, I implore you, stop with the thumbs up, please, gimmick. Ray! Not a gimmick I like. It's Ray's fault. No, it's your fault because you keep you keep expounding it too much. God damn it! Hey, hey, you guys want to see something? Yes. So I have this resident, right? And she, they live in Germany, and every time they come, I get like German candy, and it's like the I'll good shit. Ask a question. Yeah. How is it the resident if they live in Jersey? What Jersey? I live in fucking New York. I work in New I mean, York. What are you talking German. about? I, I was because, literally napping. Because they. Because they own the apartment in New York City and they also live in Germany. Are you drinking already, Tommy? What the hell's going I, on over here? You said they're a resident. A resident means they live with you. I didn't do that one. Well, they do live with you. Anyway, you know what? Go ahead, Professor. I'm just going to follow you. But you just said they live what, in a, Germany. what a mistake this is. What if you told the truth? This is what happens. They when vacation all drink. New York when City. We are, I'm, a, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm, I'm doing the edict right now for the PWR. No drinking. Dick for who? No, no. Do dick. I'm, I'm gonna do a Tommy Wonder. <laughs> so I don't even like that either, Red. That's a gimmick I hate too. This it's is so fucking annoying. Is that when I'm I listening, first of all, I don't chew with my mouth open like. When I'm listening to a podcast, all the New Yorkers. Man, here it's not a rapper. I don't. There's never a rapper. Oh my God! There's always a rapper. See, see, you're smiling, TW, because you know it's true. Man, I, I just, I just try to ignore it. I just try to move on with the show. But you know what? You see, Ray, you see what the professor has to go through to try to host the show, to try to get, keep it going. And now he's got a new gimmick. He's doing it. He's doing yeah. it, too. And you're telling him to see what he has to go to. He's doing it. When I hear Tommy okay. Wonder talk, I hear this. Go, you know the, you know the thing. That's Tommy Wonder. Mm-hmm. Now, now you got a new gimmick with the, the fireworks and the thumb up your ass. So what are you trying to do? You move around. You do Stevie Wonder. You eat with, with rappers. What are you mm-hmm. talking about, TW? You're doing all this stuff. Oh, oh, hold on, and hold on. now... Unboxing time. Now it's unboxing. Oh, that was that? Great. Look at that. What is that? That's probably two numbers higher than you can count, but it's one of 5,000. Yeah, but I can't see the, you the got name. A dark, you got a Dark Order action figure? Who is that? Jobber. What was this guy's name? Alex Reynolds. I don't you know, know what? Is. I thought Alex Reynolds and the Grizzle Young Bat guy was the same guy. Thought he was doing double shots. Oh, he is. No, it's not. Why did they, they, fucking, they lit up AEW, didn't they? The Grizzle Young Bats <laughs> tore it up. A- absolutely, they did. They they they're gonna be signed. Don't worry. It's just just a it's a matter of time. Just like the TV deal. It's just a matter of time. But anyway, we do not talk about the present. We talk about the past. But we talk about a past with a twist on this show, Reflectionites, because we are doing what we do best. The most popular series is the What If series. And I pick one, so this way TW will like it. I pick one that, since our special guest, executive producer extraordinaire, Big Ray, is here with us, he will enjoy it. And now you got to get your booking hats going, gentlemen, because this one is going to be a doozy. Because you know what? Last week on the PWR podcast, Reflection Ice, you know, we were doing, again, no bourbon, no nothing. Jesus Christ. 
What is happening here? This is the most you are, you are You have blasphemed more in the 10 minutes we've been recording than you Professor. have in eight years I've known you. Professor, mm-hmm. you're talking about, right? Yeah. Mm, that ain't me. I'm the one trying to host the show. I'm Jeez, trying to host you the show. Oh, my God. Can I, can I say something? All yeah. jokes aside, Professor. Mm-hmm. When I listen to the podcast, you throw so many GDs out there, like my spirit hurts. Like I, I, I can see, I can see Jesus yeah. just like. You better hang out with him now, Ray, because we're not gonna be able to hang out with him on right. the other side. Right. This we'll, blasphemer. We'll get him on the other side. I, I, I am going to be up there while y'all gonna be down you're gonna there. Be in, you're gonna be in the remade <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah, just based oh. off your DMs. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's gonna, gonna be all basketball players. It's gonna yeah. be a lot of fun though. <laughs> I got, I'm gonna get the tripod ready. But anyway. Can I get on with the show, people? Sure. Just, can just, people, just can so you people know, let the just, show go on? Just real quick, just so you know, all the all the people in Sodom and Gomorrah that are going to be attacking uh, Professor are going to be Joel Embiid. It's going to be just a bunch of Joel Embiid's down there. You know what that is? Oh, Tom? God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Giant African guy. A, a little bit. They just did another one. I just do a J. A, J. a little bit of decorum. African. A little bit of decorum, gentlemen, please. All right. Sorry. But anyway. All right. But anyway. Let, let's try to get the show going on the road. Okay. Again, this is the What If series, guys. And for the Reflection Ice, we're going to try to change the course of wrestling history. We're going to try to change the course of the tag team scene in the WWE. So I thought of a doozy here because, again, I'm hearing a rapper. Sorry. I'm hearing a rapper. God damn it. It's either rappers or thumbs up. What the hell are we going to do here? Sorry. You I'm, know, I'm not going to eat no more. I promise. <laughs> thank you. Very, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to send out a memo to, to, to the CWR beer. Pro. The production meeting is gonna have a memo, and y'all gonna have to take it. But anyway, take it up the ass. But anyway, neither here nor oh. there. All right, enough with that, Tommy. Stop. Jesus, Good professor. Christ. What a, trying, a creep. I'm trying to do a show here. But anyway, <clears throat> with the WWF tag team scene going crazy, it, stop it, TW. Stop it. Stop it. Put the hands down. Don't ignore Put him. It. Ignore him. I can't now because it's right there because he's doing it. Thank God, A Track doesn't put up the the video anymore. Good, good for him. <laughs> Thank God. But anyway, no more unboxings. Thank you very much. Oh but anyway, no! Can I go on with the show? Yeah, yeah, sure. There, can the people do the show? So this is Doink, right? We're talking Doink. No, we're not talking about Doink. But anyway, Top five, the five. tag team scene was off the chain in the mid-80s for the WWF. You had the Hart Foundation. You had the British Bulldogs. You had Demolition, the Killer Bees, the Young Stallions, the Conquistadors, the Rougeau Brothers, the Dream Team, and it goes on and on and on. And the Bolsheviks, yes. Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov, too. Even the U.S. Express during this time period. But what if we infused Rockers? T- all right, I got it, TW. I got it. Thank Tell you. The best of them all, the Rockers and British the Bulldogs. And, and the Brain Busters. I got it. I know all this stuff, too. British, I'm just British Bulldogs. He said yes. them first. Oh. But anyway. Oh, yeah. What, if we, what if we infuse mm. two iconic tag teams from the Southern Wrestling Territories? What if we infuse two tag teams who lit up the Mid-South area, who lit up world-class, who lit up the Mid-Atlantic areas. And I'm talking about the Midnight Express and the Rock and Roll Express, respectively, guys. So before we even try to book it and all that stuff, TW, I'm going to start with you because, again, we got two of the top tag teams, maybe the top 10 tag teams of all time with the Midnight Express and the Rock and Roll Express. Their pedigrees are undeniable. Their contributions to the wrestling game is undeniable, unfathomable. But TW, you know, it's not about saying what if could they have like adapted to the WWF scene, but what it would have been like for those two, let's say Southern psychology wrestling tag teams respectively, could they have adapted to the Vince McMahon style of the WWF. Let's see. I think the Midnight's Stan Lane version absolutely could because they would have done everything the Brain Busters did. The Rock and Roll Express were a little bit small compared. Even the Rockers were bigger than them. So it might have been tougher for them. However, yeah. Vince has shown you with fucking many people over the years, you can be small. If you're over, you're getting put over. So I think the Rock and Roll Express... If the fans took to them, I think they would have done well. I also think, depending on what year it is, there's no rocker signing if they got the Rock and Roll Express. So right. you might have derailed all of Shawn Michaels. 
unless NWA signed the Rock and Roll Express, I mean, the Rockers to replace the Rock and Roll Express leaving. I think mm-hmm. you kind of derail Shawn Michaels' whole career if if the Rock oh. and Roll Express go there first. You're, you're making get that you you actually making that assumption that the Rock and Roll Express came into the WWF scene in 1985. We would never get the Rockers being signed, let's say, in 1988. Oh, unless the Rock and Roll Express bombed and the Rockers blew up in NWA. Okay, I can I can respect that. Uh, kind of thought process there i might not agree with it totally but you know that's just neither here nor there but big ray the the special guest executive producer extraordinaire the same question goes to you could both the midnight express and the rock and roll express adapt to the vince mcmahon stylings of the world wrestling federation during the mid 80s i mean i think they could have but i i you know i don't know if you guys are gonna agree with me but i think out of everybody like out of all four guys I think Sweet Stan Lane, I think he was about 6'1", 6'2". He probably would have broke out um, as a singles competitor, in my opinion. I Might think have been he, the model before the model. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the thing. He was extremely good looking. He was a really good worker. I, I, I really liked I, I liked his work. In he the reminded ring. me of Lex Luger, but short. Right, exactly. Now, you had guys like... But um, with, with charisma. Luger kind of didn't have it. Right, like, like Robert Gibson and fucking Ricky Morton. Ricky Morton's awesome. But Robert Gibson, he's very, very good. But I, I don't know, man. I just, I could never wrap my head around how these two guys were, uh, were, you know, uh, Tiger Beat magazine uh, fodder I, for I the why. ladies. Why? Because <clears throat> in the land of giants, because even in the NWA guys were still big, mm-hmm. that they were the guys that the <clears throat> girls in the audience thought they could go home with, like right, they had a shot. I get just, it. Just, just remember, Ray. Mm-hmm. What did the Rock and Roll Express have? Well, at least one of them has. They have big hammers in their pants. Not not only that, but one of them had luck. one of them one of them had chest hair. Robert Gibson uh, has some uh, manly him. manly <laughs> chest hair for the eighties, just like T W has chest hair right now at his day and age. Yeah, I know you do, well, but you don't have the Robert Gibson chest hair well, that chest made the women all the way down to my ball throw. That is disgusting. There you go. But again, that that's one of those things that made the women go crazy for Robert Gris- Gibson and Ricky Morton. Plus, he could have an eye on one there and on one over well, there. That, that's another thing. Like, like I don't think the weird eye would have gotten over. Like <laughs> I, aesthetic. Listen, aesthetic. It works for Sean. Ah, no, Sean got that shit later in life. That's a fact. Um, <laughs> I, I, but but fucking this guy looked like a. I don't know. He looked like a. Like an I don't know, like a European Biggie Smalls with his weird eye, you know, going one way and the other one. But I'm talking about Robert Gibson. How, how can Robert Gibson get hit from behind if he could look at the other way? That would make no sense. That yeah, logically could never make sense. What are we talking about here? I, I listen. Here's how they could have got over, Professor. How? No matter. No, no, what. no, not 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 yet. No, not that no, question I'm yet. Gonna, I'm going to tell you. It answers your question. This would have instantly gotten him over because even okay. if people aren't watching NWA, <laughs> magazines were very prevalent. So mm-hmm. those two had such a feud for so long. You could have the Rock and Roll Express debut. You could push it. Like, coming next week, Ricky and Robert, the Rock and Roll Express, are going to be here. And the second they walk out to get their interview and introduction, the Midnight Express attack them. Well, hold and on. I got a question. Them there at the same time. I got a question for both of you guys. And I don't know if, and if it's on your list, Professor, just, you know, be like, oh, right, we'll hold it for later. But now my question is, does the Midnight Express come alone? Or are they coming with uh, Jim Cornette? And... If they do come with Jim Cornette, you know, you have baby face managers like Captain Lou Albano. Is he taking, you know, is he going to be managing? Because that makes sense. Listen, this, time out. This, this is the beauty of what if. This is every, all levels are open on this one. So this but I'm going to put, uh, but I want to pull a caveat on both of you because, again, both of you are talking about sweet Stan Lane. But I want to make sure no, that Connery. you're Stop no, 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 no. Oh. We have to have both versions. We have to have <laughs> both versions of the Midnight Express within this. Because, again, this is the mid-80s. We have to have the Dennis Condry, Bobby Eaton to debut. But then we also can oh. infuse the Sweet Stan Lane era in 87 because it makes it more prevalent to what all you talk about with adaptability and the success factor. That's uh, again. That's the only rule I have. You have Andrew and Eaton would be, they would they would be dead on arrival, dead you on re- arrival. You Eaton really would- was a good wrestler, but he had no personality. Condry had neither, and so Stan mm. Lane coming there could wrestle and had charisma. He made them that that those two are in my top five favorite tag teams of all time. Now, Condry's not even sniffing my top ten. Now check it out. No, going back to the. Thing- 
going back, so 1986, we're talking about we are in the heart of the rock and wrestling um, era. And that's why you had you had um, this is why I mentioned a guy like Captain Lawbano, who was very, you know, with the Cindy Lauper and with with the, you know, with the rock and roll and being the videos and stuff like that. Can you imagine maybe maybe who knows, maybe if he's managing the rock and roll express, they appear along, you know, Captain Lawbano as maybe the boys. Oh, they could be a music video. What if what if right? In, the, in that music video, girls just want to have fun when she puts Captain Lou Albano in the fucking, uh, the, the, what is it, the chicken wing or whatever the hell she, when she presses him against the wall, you know, she runs out of the out of the house and guess who picks her up? The Rock and Roll Express. And they take her out and they run a double team on her, you know, like a spigot. What? Oh, Jesus Christ. The corn, what? Ray. What? You, you talk about me going to hell. I think, you, I think no. you're joining me. You're joining it's me. Like you're reading uh, Professor sweet, DM. Right his sweet DP, that, man. That, that's that's, wrong that's with what that. it is. But you know what? It, it, it dawns on the professor, guys, because let's start with the Rock and Roll Express, because I think if we're going to do this, and I'll respect that you say that Condrey and Eden are not, cannot make it. I'll go with TW's thing. But for the Rock and Roll Express, they could debut in the WWF in 85. They can debut during that rock and wrestling, you know, time out camaraderie. Wait, let me uh, just say, let me, wait, wait, wait. NWA? Say what? When were they first starting to get over in NWA? 84. In 85. That's so they, they can't go there yet in 85. The reason they're getting over there in WWE. No, no, but this is, the, but remember, Vince McMahon plucked people from Mid South. Vince McMahon plucked yeah. people from But if they're not over class. yet, then there, there's no reason to take them. They're too small for New York. No, they were already over in the Mid South. Okay. All right. Oh, Miss South, gotcha. Yeah, they were already over. But again, but let me let's start with the Rock and Roll Express because again, I think eighty five would have been the perfect time for them to debut <laughs> with what Big Ray is saying because you had like what was it? Kiss, I want to rock and roll all night and party mm-hmm. every day. That song. You had a uh, Bad to the Bone. I forgot the guy who sang it, but I know his name was George. George Thurgood. George, George South. I, George South. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> Not yourself, but George oh. Thurgood. Thank you, T.W., my resident, oh. my, my resident rock historian. <clears throat> but you, but T.W. gets it. You had Def Leppard. You had Motley Crue songs. You had even Bon... Well, I don't know when Bon Jovi came out, but you know, T.W., you know where I'm going with this. Blow up. There, there was a lot of rock and roll songs that the... For the video vignettes, if you will, Reflection Nights, for the mm-hmm. Rock and Roll Express to debut at. So let's, let's focus on the Rock and Roll Express first. I'm going to go with Big Ray right now. Let's say I'll give you that hypothetical 85 because, like I said, it's nine, It's the Rock and Wrestling Connection. What would Big Ray do? I already got, k- kind of gave you a little bit of the blueprint. Like Break you out said, a special doc. The, the music video vignettes. You got, you got George Thurgood. You got Motley Crue. You got all that stuff to say the Rock and Roll Express is coming to the mm-hmm. WWF very soon. So what would Big Ray do for the Rock and Roll Express? What kind of impact you want them to make knowing the tag team scene in the WWF? So first, what I would do is I would run um, a series of um, remember how back in 80 in, in the 1980s, they had this whole thing. It was like a not publicity uh, when MTV was coming out. They were going, I want my MTV. I want mm-hmm. my MTV. And they had different, you know, they had different rock and roll, uh, you know, characters or whatever, you know, asking for their MTV, Billy Idol and uh, Cindy Lauper. And and I would have done something like that off of that. I would have had babyface, I don't know, like a babyface manager, uh, Captain Lawbano. I want my Rock and Roll Express, and then you have like maybe. I, I thought I thought actually you meant babyface the singer. I was like, damn, he don't. No, mix, not that I don't guy. think he makes. Babyface, fun fact: babyface is actually ninety six years old. He just never <laughs> fucking aged. But anyway, um, good genes, wasn't good he genes Shalimar? Like he was in some guy group, or why not, bro? Group, fine. Uh, Bubba the Devote. Listen, so. <laughs> So I would have had like like you know Captain Albano uh, and and also also I would have had so 1986 what are we talking what is that WrestleMania um, two two all right so you have uh, who else who who was a uh, part of WrestleMania two um, Elvira Elvira you, so oh, yeah. just cutting little clips I want my Liberace. Rock and Roll Express Liberace I want my Rock and Roll Express you know so you're having all these all these people finally finally I I would save Captain Lou Albano. To be the last person, or maybe Cindy Lauper and Captain Law Battle together, we won our Rock and Roll Express, and then they sh- and then they show up in the vignette. You know, you know why, and then I'll go to T- TW. I'll go with you second, but I just wanted to put put the bow on this for my 
my takings here because you know why I said 85 is perfect is because remember a year before that, a year prior to that, WWF wanted the fabulous Freebirds. WWF wanted like Cindy Lauper and, and Dave Wolf to be involved with the fabulous Freebirds in somehow, some way. <laughs> Rock and Roll Express and Big Ray is, you know, hammering it down right now with Cindy Lauper and Dave Wolf could have been that quote unquote manager for the rock and roll express and to take them to the next level just in case hypothetically but tw the floor is yours what would be tw's way to like introduce them to the wwf universe or the WWE like, like universe? i said you guys oh. know sort of but i like Ray's thing. i like vignettes where first you have a couple weeks of people just saying i want my rock and roll express then you have them come out in 86 is a good time because if you remember 80 86 wrestlemania 2 it was Ozzy that came out with mm. the Bulldogs. So mm -hmm. Captain Lou yeah. could be looking for a new tag team because the Bulldogs went with Ozzy. Now you can have him. Do, I, I love his idea where Cindy Lauper and them are the last ones to say, we want our Rock and Roll Express, and they come out. And then, like I said, immediately, as soon as they're out there and everyone's having nothing but a good time, unannounced, no like vignettes, that. out of nowhere, <laughs> Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane come out and ruin the fucking debut of the Rock and Roll Express and whoop their ass, and now we got both of them. So someone like me, who didn't watch NWA, but read the magazines, that's how I got into wrestling, was the magazines. I would be like, holy shit, they're here? Because their few would have carried over. Let me, let, well, let me ask you, like, why do you want to go that route so immediately? So, like, so quickly? Because, again, you could, like, you know, you could slow burn the animosity between the two teams. Because you don't want to you, like if you're trying give it to strike out. why the iron's hot, like look what AEW. They put Adam Cole, uh uh O'Reilly and Fish together immediately. Because mm -hmm. it was you want to make it look like you stole not only are you stealing both of them from the dub NWA, you're stealing their booking because you're having it carry over. Remember Hogan feuded with the Sheik then he feud the Sheik in AWA first and then in WWF. But no oh, but no no but, but Piper and Valentine, like a lot of guys that had feuds in the mid south in NWA, ended up feuding in WWF at the same time, or not the same time, but yeah. eventually. But to have yeah, them, yeah, the word is there, eventually, but it never was. But like to I have said, them it's a come slow burn. There is like, oh, you motherfuckers are going at WWF. Well, guess what? So are we, and it keeps the heat rolling. It's instant heat. I'm I'm dying to say this. So I I actually agree with Tommy with with having like you know they make their debut and boom all of a sudden you know who the fuck is this tag team? But so now, Professor, you say David Wolf and standing there with Cindy Lauper and maybe Captain Lou Albano. I want my I want my Rock and Roll Express, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, David Wolf gets a fucking tennis racket to the back. Nice. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He gets a tennis racket to the back, and then you have Gorilla Monster. And who is this? You know? And then Bobby Heenan's like, I know that guy. I know who that is. You know what I'm saying? That's Jim Cornette. You know Jim Cornette. He's been all over the world. You know how they don't they don't pull it over that he's been an NWA. And then while and then while Jim Cornette standing there with this tennis racket, and you see the two, the, the you know Robert Gibson and and uh, what's the other gimmick? Uh, uh, Ricky, Ricky Morton. Morton. Ricky Morton getting ready to kick his ass. Boom! They get jumped from behind. Who the whole? Who are those guys? Bobby Heenan. I know those two guys. I know that's the Midnight Express. Yo, dude. Like and then boom, bro. You have that. That could happen. I would have booked that at a Saturday night's main event. On a yeah. national TV audience, because you lead up, you lead up all the way up. I want my, I want my Rock and Roll Express until boom, Saturday Night's main event. It could be the opening act of Saturday Night's main event that that'll stay in people's minds, or it could it that could have been that could have been. I don't mean to cut you off. That could have been like the third or fourth sure. episode of Saturday Absolutely. Night's main event before Absolutely. you get into that WrestleMania program, or one of the big stadium shows that the WWF was doing in the mid '80s. So you should have it start the show. And then be the fucking bonus match at the end of the Saturday yes. night event. And then have it be a dusty finish where the fucking four of them just fucking powder wait, out. Wait, before that, because we got instant heat right now. Again, you didn't, we haven't really introduced the Midnight Express. We've only had them putting the heat on the Rock and Roll Express, but we haven't heard nothing. You, like you said, Bobby Heaton is saying, who's this guy? Bobby Heaton is saying, who's the, who is Stan Lane? Who is Bobby Heaton? All that stuff. But we need to hear. Jim Cornette speak. We need to hear that promo heat. 
like right. like you like on Superstars or Wrestling Challenger or even the or even Saturday Night's main event. Me and Gene Oakland could be so pissed off as like, what the hell is going on with you? Why are you ruining the debut of the Rock and Roll Express? That's yeah. the way I would kind of do it well, to introduce perfect. the world and introduce the masses. You have the main event start with the Rock and Roll getting fucking jumped during their time, and then you have the whole episode. Gene's trying to find these fuckers. Finally does, and it ends with the Rock and Roll Express. Jumping them while they're getting interviewed, and then it ends with the oh. fucking the fight. Okay, I, I, now you have to watch Superstars. To that's see heat, how bro. Unfolded. That's heat. And yeah. they're instantly the talk of the town now. They're they're the ones everyone's talking about. No matter what Hogan and Macho Man and Hunky Tongue did, these motherfuckers are the one everyone's gonna be talking about. Good question: Who, who prime time wrestling? Who would attack? Who would? Who's the tag team champions in '86? Was it Bulldog? Valentine and Beefcake? Valentine Beefcake. Well, th- that year it was <laughs> Valentine and Beefcake, then the British Bulldogs. Right. In that in that year. So wow. I'm just, just thinking, man. Like the like the matches that could have happened back then. It immediately reflection nights. The Midnight Express and Rock and Roll Express has overshadowed the <laughs> WWF tag team scene, by the way. TW and Big Ray is booking it because no one cares about the tag team champions. You're caring about the undercard, the undercard feud How about that this? is carrying over. How about this to make Go you ahead. happy? They make a mm-hmm. big deal. Everyone gets their Rock and Roll Express. No Stan Lane, no Bobby Eaton, and ruin it. They go right to the tag team title scene. The big match is going to be Valentine and Beefcake versus the Rock and Roll Express in their debut, and they get screwed by the Midnight Express coming there. You do that too. Quietly screwing them against Valentine and Beefcake. You know and, what, Tommy? You know yeah. what? Check it out. While while the Rock and Roll Express have the upper hand, they're about to win the tag team titles. Right. Right. All of a sudden, that's Jim Cornette and, uh, right. running around the ring with this fucking tennis racket, banging on you know, banging on the apron like he used to. And they they know who he is. Then right. you can have Bobby Heenan. I know that guy. And that yeah, man, that that would work awesome. That would be great. That's a that's a nice way to like <laughs> slow burn it, and then have the Midnight Express get their thunder and get the the rise from the crowd because they're like, who is that? Who's that manager right now? Because again, reflection I. Bear with us because there's a lot of variables here because not only, guys, you have to agree with this. The tag team scene is bumping in the mid-80s for the WWE, but the manager scene is bumping too. You got Keenan, you got Fuji, you got Hart, you got Luscious Johnny V, you got Frenchie Martin, and now you infuse Jim Cornette. So now I have to change, not change the booking. I just want to just kind of like parlay this to you guys here because – we got to talk about the Jim Cornette effect because, again, you're infusing another top tier man. Well, we're, we are saying this in hindsight, right, that Jim Cornette is a top tier manager. But for WWF purposes, we we know that tier A or the tops of the top is Bobby the Brain Heenan. The Heenan family is the top. So my question to you before the booking, it's not about bookings. Just let's have that friendly what if discussion. Go with TW first here, guys. T.W., where on the tiers in the 80s would you put Jim Cornette on the managerial tier? Because are you are you having Jim Cornette add more guys to a big stable? Bubba. Or you got to have Big Bubba. Oh, well, well, besides that, besides the Big Bubba fact, you don't want him to, like, Luscious Johnny had a couple of guys. You know, Frenchie Martin had a couple of guys. You don't want to have the – do you want to have that big stable or do you want to have, like, a core, just like Jim Cornette has always been? He had the core – Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, Big Bubba. That was it. No, nothing really in between. Was that's what we. Well, that's that's what Jimmy I'm Hart. To say. Jimmy Hart had the, had the Hart Foundation and the Honky Tonk Man. But I think I think it, you see how he takes. You have him come there with the midnight, and you see. No, how no, this is just hy- this is just hypothetical, TW. I'm just right. saying, like but for the WWE, depend person. on how the audience. If the audience don't give a shit about him, he ain't gonna be there long, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I think <laughs> inevitably. You don't have Big Bubba at first because you want people to get their hands on him. And then you introduce Big Bubba. We never have Big Boss Man. We just have Big Bubba right from the rip. But uh, mm-hmm. but you have him there, which brings more heat because now nobody can get their hands on him. And and you wonder, maybe the scaffold matches now start in WWE, unless they already had one with the Road Warriors by 85. But uh, Well, scaffold matches happened in the 70s in the South, so that's just logistics. I'm at the Midnight Express Road Warriors. That's good shit. I don't know about no fucking 1970s fucking caddy shit. Like, well, I'm just. But again, Vince McMahon's not gonna go that extreme with scaffold matches. But Big Ray, the same question. They never had one. No, they they never did. But anyway, 
But Big Red, the same question applies to you again with the tears of the wrestling managers in the WWF in the mid 80s. Do you want Jim Cornette to have a stable or do you want to have that core just like he, he always had in the NWA? Just keep it simple. I, keep it direct. I like the idea of um, I, I don't want to I don't know about a state. Well, maybe a stable because I like the idea of having Big Bubba Rogers there. You know, now, now the, we, I think to me, me and TW think that's a core. That's the core right. of those three. So, I mean, now, now, if, if you're thinking about managers that were, l- let's just think real quick, because I know Arnold Skolan was still a manager back then. You have Catherine Albano. Slick was a manager in 1986. Bobby Heenan, Jimmy Hart. I'm trying to think of who other Catherine Albano. I'm trying to think of all the managers Fuji. that were. Fuji was there. Um, was he managed? He was kind of wrestling and managing still at the same time, but he's still yeah. manager around 86. I was 10 yet. So. <clears throat> Right, I think right off the bat, right off the bat, um, he would shoot up. He'd be parallel with Jimmy Hart. I think ah, I think he would be above. I think he would be the number two manager after Heenan. After Heenan, because if you like really think about, it, especially once he starts talking on the microphone and people start hearing his vitriol on the microphone. Now, with that being said, um, I really do think that um, yeah, you know what? To answer your question, I'm gonna say yes. I say yes, a stable. It's going to have, you know, the monster and the big boss man or, you know, Big Bubba Rogers as he comes in. Who knows if he maybe big boss man never happens in the WWE, but he's going to need one more guy. So you got the rock and roll special, Big Bubba Rogers. And I'm trying to think of somebody who's another rocks rocker type um, component that could kind of be like a singles wrestler with them. And I'm thinking you mean, somebody- a, mid- you mean a midnight express. You keep saying rock and roll. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the midnight express. I'm thinking Mr. Perfect. Well, I'm thinking more along the lines of like a honky tonk man, somebody that that you know that that is is like a music type guy. You know what I'm saying? That that he's known to be a he steals it from Jimmy Hart. I I don't know, but um, but definitely Big Bubba Rogers and the Midnight Express. That's mm-hmm. yeah, get the you get the thumbs up gimmick. I didn't do that. <clears throat> you just you did it. You did it, Tom. I, I I didn't do nothing. I crossed my damn arms <laughs> and I did it. Mm-hmm. Neither here nor there, but you know it, it it is what it is. But for me, I think I like to keep it in that. Maybe like me and TW is like the stable core right there. The triple threat, you could say, just keep it small, keep it direct for, for the purposes of, you know, just Jimmy making Garvin. that statement. Jimmy Garvin. What about him? Jimmy Garvin to be there with the rock, with the Midnight Express, the stable. That would be very, uh, it wouldn't match. It wouldn't mesh. Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valley. Now, now we're just making them jobbers. Yeah, you, you're just doing that. So. I want to go back to what you both guys said because with the Rock and Roll Express probably mm. d- debuting first. Oh, Rock and Roll ahead. Buck Zumoff, you bring him in so you can touch all the little boys <laughs> in the backstage. You, oh, him and that black ref, uh, black ring announcer would actually have a good time in the in the locker room Oof. with Pat Patterson. But again, need to hear that. That's what, all what alleged. What are you telling me about? What happened with the black ring announcer? You don't know. Google no. it. Just Google Hold it. On. Hold on. I, I can picture I, the guy right now, man. He's. Well, what did he do? You know what Diddy did, he did right? Yeah, put that black ref, 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 uh, ring announcer in the same light. That's all I want to say. But anyway, that what ended your refing dreams. Yes, it did. But anyway, <laughs> neither here nor there. But let, let's go on here because again, you guys said it. You know, you were prevalent on this. Rock and Roll Express debuts first. They get all that momentum. I want my Rock and Roll Express, and somehow, some way, they make it to the. To, to be the number one contenders to the tag team titles, and we already got that match. So now we have to change the hyperboles here because now you already booked it where the Midnight Express debuts, fucking it up. But mm-hmm. now, you know, everything runs its course. So my question to you guys is, with both of them there, both of them in the tag team scenes, you already booked it beautifully with the debut and then could go to Saturday Night's main event, could go to WrestleMania 2 or WrestleMania 3 and 87 between the Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express and all that stuff. You could do Texas Tornado matches. You could do double uh, strap matches. You could do all that stuff with the with the Rock and Roll and the Midnight, the way that you can last for maybe a, a year or two. But my question to you guys is, we have to go into... Who wins the titles first? And oh, what, would be be the, the, what would be the best way for them? And what would be the best team to you know get it from? So I was I'm going to start with Ray first. Yeah, I, I got to jump in. It's got to be the heels because the money's in the chase. You know, and then and you look at Robert Gibson and uh, and um, Jesus, what's wrong with my head? Ricky, Ricky, Ricky Morton. Morton. You, look, you look at the Rock. How is he the first. one you can't remember? I don't know why. Um, he but remembers Morton, the chest hair. That's all. I'm that's what it is. Going. Mm-hmm. But Robert Gibson, Ricky Morton, um, they 
they are the smaller out of the two, out of the two tag teams. Um, also, Ricky Morton had like kind of a baby face, baby face. You know, he was like like a more, but he was a he was a good seller, very sympathetic and the best ever. Oh my God! And he, you know, Robert Gibson, whether if you could tell which way he was looking, he was pretty decent as well. <laughs> now, with that being he said, was looking man, for help from any angle, bro, easy. The money's in the chase, and you know what? I, I make it a year long chase because I, I have tag teams. Because now, remember, don't forget, we have tons of tag teams. We have Babyface tag, Killer Bees, all those guys were there. But I would have people get in their way, just people get in their way. Uh, Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine, and uh, well, they're the champs, so you'd have to have them lose the belts to the Bulldogs. That's what they would do anyway. That wouldn't change. Nice. Yeah, no, that would that's how you get the belts on the midnight. You fucking ruin the Bulldogs' reign. No, no, what I'm saying is that that Bulldogs beat Beefcake and Valentine, but then, right. yes, you get these guys. And remember, so now Captain Albano is, remember, he he managed, he used to manage uh, multiple tag teams at times. Right. So he had the Bulldogs. He also has the Rock and Roll Express. He's, he, they're part of that, that, uh, did Albano have like a family name? No, it was just, you know, just the cap, just Captain's people. That's Captain's, all. Yeah, Captain Lewis. Um, and, you know, and I'm thinking out of the box, and I know I'm thinking way out of the box here, but I'm just thinking, man, like Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling, like like those guys would have been great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Both tag teams, you know, as, as part and of You know the what they could have done if it was that back then they didn't have it, but if they had that contract shit where they couldn't compete for 90 days, you could put them on that fucking cartoon first because it's not wrestling. That's how they got yeah. Luger out of his fucking no compete with the WBF. They put him on that. Cause he had to wait like a fucking so many months before they could put him in a wrestling ring. Yeah. It, it's funny, Ray and I'll, TW hold your thought about the, the question I asked, but I just want to say this because it, it's kind of funny because with thinking, uh, thinking about the champions at that time, it's just funny where you say the midnight express would be the first to let's say beat the bulldogs. In my humble opinion, Ray, the midnight express and the heart foundation are literally almost the same in, in, a, in kind of, in literally the kind of like the same way of the way they approach the matches psychologically and all that stuff, even though Jim, the Nam anvil Nightheart is stronger than all th three of them combined, neither right. here nor there, but you get where I'm going with this heart foundation and midnight express. Almost is, it, it almost is if they are there, if they are there, the heart foundation is kind of like an odd team out with their legacy and, and where <clears> they would <throat> go in, in the hierarchy. I think the killer tech. bees are the ones out of a job. Because they I were already so. fucking falling on the fucking... By the time Strike Force got there, it was bye-bye killer bees. I, I, I'm just looking at that. So I just wanted to say that. Ray, you agree, disagree, or have a different take on that? I, I still think... No, I, I still think Green that... Green rises to the top. No, it's just yeah, hypothetically, it, wouldn't, it just kind of dawned on me that the Midnight Express and the Heart Foundation is almost <laughs> identical in the way they approach the match as heels. Well, so remember, would they be Heart dominant out? No, because Heart Foundation will be one of those teams that keep getting in the way of the Rock and Roll Express getting that title shot. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That that because because like I said, it's the chase, man. The money's in the chase. You have the Midnight Express. They could they're, they're trying to they are gonna be heel tag team. They're gonna win cheating. You have Jim Cornette in their corner. They're gonna lose. They're gonna cheat, cheat, cheat. They're gonna win, win, win. And then Rock and Roll Express. Every time they're getting close to getting a title match, they get into they fall into a feud with. Fucking, you know, with another no, heel it, tag it's, team. It's, it's <laughs> nice to say that because the the hurdles of the Rock and Roll Express, you have the Hard Foundation, <clears> you have the Dream Team, you have, let's say, the Bolsheviks and stuff like that as the hurdles to get to, let's well, say, the Midnight Express being tag team champions to a degree. You, you, you're forgetting about a tag team that people really forget a lot about. That honestly, if this was, if wrestling wasn't predetermined, they wouldn't lose to anybody. And that tag team is Big John Studd and King Kong Bundy. Right, nineteen eighty six. That, that would have been, been their match, sending them back to the NWA. That like, could you like that? Like, well, how do you book, you know, Big John Studd and King Kong Bundy versus the freaking Rock and Roll Express? That'd be beautiful. That's money. Like you said, that's money because of King because Goliath of Goliath and uh, David you, and Goliath. I just watched it recently. I was telling Professor <clears> a few <throat> shows back. I never knew the fucking Rock and Roll Express or the Rockers fought Akeem and Big Boss Man. And they did all that fucking flying around right, yeah. to knock them off their feet. That You know that's why Haku was Andre the Giant's partner, right? Because they needed someone to lose the belts once they won them. Well, that but, that and also that Andre could Stud really and Bundy are two Andres. Yeah. 
TW, yeah. the floor yep. is yours. The question <laughs> still remains: Who gets the titles first, the Midnight I, or the, or the Rock and Rock and Roll? And and I, here's how I would do it: I would I would still stick with the the debuting Rock and Roll Express. They're giving them their flowers, as they say these days. They're letting them everyone know these guys are world renowned. They're cutting right to the top. You could even have a babyface team cost them at some point because they're mad that they got usurped to get the title shot. Mm-hmm. Whether it's the Bulldogs or whoever, but you have them lose, and then you have the Bulldogs still win the belts from Valentine and Beefcake at WrestleMania 2, and then at a fucking house show out of nowhere, Cornette fucking smacks one of them with the racket, they win the belts, not on TV, not they, you still have video of it, and then boom, like it's like as soon as they get there, they fuck up the Rock and Roll Express, they win the belts a month, fucking two months later, so they're shit talkers, and they're backing it up with all these, you know, wins and and you know moments on on tv and then like ray said you had them fucking keep those belts for a year still defending them against the killer bees and getting clean wins and the young stallions maybe the bulldogs they fuck over again and the bulldogs get sidetracked by the heart foundation to eliminate them from wanting the rematch or whatever and then now you you just end up with rock and roll chasing the midnight express and finally the payoff is Instead of the WrestleMania, you pay off at SummerSlam, or you pay off at. Uh, well, that's really that's really stretching if we're trying to book it for two years. But I hear well, you. No, no, no. Hey. I'm saying whatever. It's something. I'm, other just, than I'm just going with. If the you do it at WrestleMania, hey. you basically just did the same program the Bulldogs and the Dream Team did. So Question you was, do something different. Was Morocco and Orton also a tag team in '86? 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, I think late '86, 80, 80, early '87. Okay, so oh, you, was got, 80, you got another tag team there you can throw in there. Well, you know, it, it's kind of funny reflection ice because again, it it seems like we are all in agreement. I we all agree Sorry, that I'm just <laughs> no, no. I, I will get I will get into those tag teams, right? You you you're almost jumping the gun. I had the the program in my head, so but I just want to say we kind of all agree that the Midnight Express hypothetically should be the ones getting the belts first. So it, whether it would be a house show, you know, it would be great. See, this is again Nick Khan, Triple H. You got to. You gotta listen to us because we're trying to tell you how shows are valuable. Mm. Things happen. Things you would buy a ticket to a house show if you knew that titles would change. You don't even, you know. Again, TW, you might not he- like this, but you don't need to have the video camera because people have their phones. And the now. best kind of right now. So the best thing, the out the blue kind of booking now is to have a title change and just have somebody's Twitter account just be like, oh, we got exclusive from this Twitter account. With a hot, with the, I'm just saying for now, but back can then ask, you needed can the, you, the, the can video. A, can I ask you guys a quick question? So yeah. I, and I forgot I, another tag team jumped in my head in 1986, and I know they, I know they were there, the Funk Brothers. Um, yeah, they were there. Do you think now? Think about all these tag teams you have, right? Now you know how in the NWA they had the, the World Tag Team Titles, the USA title, the US titles, tag team right. titles. Do you think because of of this rivalry and because of the amount of tag teams, because we can, I can go down a pl- like a list intercontinental of intercontinental tag team champions. Exactly. Do you think that might have happened? Like, what if, if you know, they, what if was a, what if the Midnight's or the Rock and Roll had them when they debuted and just fucking showed up on TV like Flair did with his with IC titles with, with, with the US, US no with the US tag, but team. they have to become intercontinental tag team. Titles. Oh, for sure. They can get in yeah. trouble for it. They can yeah. bleep it out, and then they can just rename it the Intercontinental Tag Team Title. No, to have a roster like that, guys, I think it would it it would behoove <laughs> Vince McMahon. Even though we know that Vince McMahon just doesn't like tag teams for some strange reason, so he likes tag teams that he are. Don't. He just did not want to have that kind of like you know motivation for the tag team division to even give them to give them. Money like that, the Intercontinental Tag Team Tournament, and you had those tag team names right there. So, with that being said, you know we got the feud out the way. Not not really out the way, but we know that that feud is money no matter what. But again, TW Big Ray, the, the names are there. So let's see, let, let's have some dream matches. What would be the dream match you want to do even after that? So I'll start with Ray first. You could pick either the Midnight or the Rock and Roll Express. What would be the dream match you want them to have that kind of program with on Saturday night's main event, WrestleMania one or two, the big event, or whatever the case may be? I think I think it's it's listen, honestly, at the time, 86 Midnight Rockers were AWA tag team champions, right? Or had they come to the WWE yet? 
they were chasing for the AWA tag team titles, but they man, were making their way up. I'm Vince McMahon. I'm looking at those kids. I would have bought those kids in, man. I, I would have stolen them from the AWA right away and be like, I'll pay you double. And I, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'll pay you double. I'll bring them in. Cause man, I would have loved to have seen, the, you know, the, I, did they wrestle the Midnight Rockers versus the Rock and Roll Express? Did they ever wrestle in their primes? They did. I never seen yeah, that. Stan Lane version? Or the Dennis Conjury version? No, you know what? Fuck it. The Rock- no, wait, you, did you say Rock and Roll against the Rockers or Midnights? I meant to Rockers say Rock and Roll Express. Midnight. I meant to say Rock and Roll Express versus the Rockers. Yeah, they, they fought each other. Yes. They did? Yes. Really? Oh, in the Mid-South before they were the Rockers. No, in 80, 88. No, no. 89 CWA. 88, 89 CWA. <clears throat> really? Okay. Yes. Is there a video so, of that, Coupon? Yes. Is it out mm-hmm. there? Please it is. Send me that. Out. Um, but man, I mean, all those tag teams out there, you asking you're asking me to pick one tag team for them to face in the WWE. No, the the, fi- the first big leg like, money match that you want either team to have, that's not a that's after the, their well, feud. Then it's gonna be for me, it's gonna be the Rock and Roll Express, the Rock and Roll Express, the baby faces versus the Heart Foundation. Like that would have been fucking great. And then for the um for the other for the other for the heels for the Midnight Express, I would have had them in a, in a battle with the British Bulldogs. We already discussed this. Fucker, I, he took them both. I have them both what? right here from a week ago. <laughs> Sorry. But it's true. That that's like those are dream match. Like guy, my God. Like British Bulldogs versus Midnight Express, British Bulldogs with Captain Lou on the corner. You got fucking Jim Coordinate in the other corner. Forget about it. But you know you know who the X Factor would be in that in that thing? Big Bubba Matilda. Rogers. Matilda. Oh, Mat- fuck Matilda. The, the, Big Bubba Rogers. I never liked that. Humping, humping Jim Cornette's leg. That would have been funny. Chasing Jim Cornette T- around the ring. TW, you said you already had the names, but the Those floor the is yours. I how, thought he was going to take book one, it? and I was going to get the other one. And I'm like, he's going to steal one of these two. And then he fucking takes them both. You can expound on but, those names. But I still think... You, and I think it would have been a good match. Oh, you got the Sheik and Volkov. You can pick those. For, for debuting, I oh. would have... Then he just fucking took the other one right from me. She can I would off? say Midnight's go oh. over clean on the Killer Bees for their debut, oh. and the okay. Rock and Roll Express, who are Americana, go mm-hmm. over clean on either Volkov and <clears throat> Zuka or Boris, Sheik. whatever the fuck his name is. Volkov Boris and Boris is... Sheik. No, the Bolsheviks, Bolsheviks were 87. Were... Right. Okay, <clears throat> fine. You have the Rock and Roll Express go over on Sheik and Volkov, which mm-hmm. is their debut, and if you're going traditional way, and you don't have them just move <laughs> to the top of the line, and you have, okay. but for feuds, Hands down, Rock and Roll versus Heart Foundation and Bulldogs versus Midnight Express. There's there's no other worthy feuds for me because everyone else is kind of just stepping stone tag teams. Unless Even Valentine and Beefcake aren't that great. Tommy, unless unless WWE decided to like if they really wanted to focus in the tag team division, they start looking elsewhere. Like I said, like you know you start bringing in guys like Curtin Hedig and and Scott Hall. You know right. at that time or or other tag teams that Brad well, they, Armstrong and fucking Tim Horner. The Lightning Express. Well, who's in the UWF? Who who was uh? Them. That that's what a uh, world yeah. class. Who who was the Von Erics? But they weren't yeah. going to go nowhere in eighty six. I, I I didn't know. I I, know th- I, think, I already I already problems. know the name that Ray wants, but then they wouldn't become the Bushwhackers. They would. Be I was Bush thinking of Bushwhackers. I forgot about the Bushwhackers. But listen, I, I think the 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 one X Factor tag team that would have been fucking amazing. It, it would have been the Three Birds. Right, the Freebirds would have been so I knew incredible. They had a cup of coffee there, but you said they tried getting them and they turned it down. No, no, they tried getting them, but then they got drunk. Andre didn't like it, and they got kicked oh, out. Well, oh. Damn, Damn. Man. like Andre my God, people pooed. If Freebirds would be so much bigger if they would have fucking made WWE. They're they're already fucking huge. Just imagine. Oh, you. I think talking? we would have got ripped off of my favorite version of the Freebirds, which is Garvin and Hayes, but. Uh, are we talking a preview of the season three of what if yeah. what if the Freebirds stayed yeah. in the WWF? I, I, the- I'm telling you, man, Garvin and Hayes, when they were chasing, when they were baby faces too, when they were U.S. champs and then world champs. And I think before, I think Arn ended up or Michael Hayes ended up teaming up with fucking Arn or fucking Zabisco or some shit. Ruined it all. That's but the dangerous alliance Gar- years of the 90s. Right. But yep. him and Jimmy Garvin, Michael Hayes. And there was a time when Gordy was with him. It, well, that's what just, I like. I, I like I like Gordy and Gordy and Hayes versus like let's say uh, Bret Hart and freaking Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Right. Like 
Right. But I'm saying Jimmy Garvin and Michael Hayes, when they were an actual tag team, they wore matching gear and they had them rebel flag capes and painted their faces. They looked oh, like a tag oh, team. Oh, oh, hold up. That, that's 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 the that's like a sneak preview reflection. I said, well, like we're I said, the, of the, we're forgetting of the, the road fall, warriors are out there of yeah, the new yeah, fall yeah. season. Ray, so R&R R&R Express, Raging Bull, Manny Fernandez and Rick Rude. Mm. So, basically, just get every NWA tag team that was in the Jim Crockett Chris scene Adams and Laura Clark, and just bring them over. Bring, just bring them all over. You just want to bring the tag team scene, all of them. You know, you know Ooh. that's sad. That's sad that never happened. Is remember right. the Crockett right. Cup? It was always mm-hmm. NWA guys. But could you imagine if they just all put their fucking dicks aside and had a Crockett Cup once a year, where just fucking everyone sent a tag team like. Couple oh, AWA yeah. tag teams, couple NWA, couple UWF, couple world class, couple WWF, and just fucking this is I, this was always my idea. If I was a successful <laughs> promoter, you put everyone's name in a fucking hat, I, and that's I, how you fucking book the winners. You pull will, out the I, fucking yeah. hat. They never do that. I, 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 I will, I will not that. troll you guys, but Tony Khan will do that. So just be patient. He will yeah, do. But that. he won't do it with no WWF guys. <laughs> I want. Won't, I, I want I, it to be but world everything you just said. Things. Tony Khan will do it. Just wait. Be they got a patient. Business. Hashtag trust in Tony. Trust in yeah. Tony. But, but let's get back into back this. One. I, I think I think we cover some major things again. We we already thought about the feuds outside of the Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express. And I like the names of the Midnight Express and the British Bulldogs. I want to focus on a little bit. Let, let's say let's parlay this right now because again. As the years wane, guys, let's say 88, 85, 86, 87, 88, they got their legs in there. Maybe they're two. Would we agree that both teams are maybe two-time tag team champions or just one? One and done. One of them at least because they got to trade the belts back and right. forth. That, okay. That's what's fused. That would be, that'd be the midnight. Midnight I, would probably be the two-time tag I think, team. I think, I think two is a minimum for both teams. Because I, I genuinely fucking think that those two teams, with that feud, if, if they – if they started the feud the way me and Tommy were, were booking it earlier, I think that would have put them at a whole different level. I think they would have been, they would have been one of the top tag teams for like at least five years, dude. So Arn and Tully showed up. Uh, that's yeah, true. That's that's actually where I'm <laughs> going because again, as the years wane, guys, again, 85, 86, 87, 88, we got to think about the tag team scene kind of like shifting up a little bit because again. I, I like the Studden Bundies. I like the, the British Bulldogs. Yeah. I like the Dream Team. But again, in the late part, the latter part, we got the Twin Towers. We, powers got, of Demo- pain. we got Demolition. We got Powers of Pain. We got the Young Stallions and all that stuff. So I just powers wanted to... I just, and Power of Glory, you could say, to a degree. So I just wanted to give some credence to... Demolition. Some- did you say Demolition? You, yes, said said demolition. you said Demolition. You I said Demolition. I just want to get... We all said it, but anyway, we all agreed to say it. So, but anyway, I just just said demolition after powers of pain. I'm trying to do this. I'm waiting for the. I'm just. I'm just waiting for the thumbs up. But anyway, I'm just trying to. I want to put the latter part of the mid '80s guys into you know '88, '89, '90. Those kind of tag team focuses again, because again, the hyperbole is there, guys. Because again, I think TW said it. I don't know who said. I think it was TW, but. If the Rock and Roll Express is there, would the Rockers be there or would they be a WCW tag team? <clears throat> With the Midnight Express being there, would the Heart Foundation maybe split up even quicker than before? Because, again, to me, they're kind of identical in psychology-wise. But they need to hear nor there. But we got tag teams like the Twin Towers. we got tag teams like the Powers of Pain. So, TW, the floor is yours. What kind of dream matches do you see in the latter parts of the mid-'80s? Like I said, 88, 89, 90. How would... You book. I definitely think if the Rock and Roll Express got over an AWA like they did, and they obviously wouldn't need them because they got Rock and Roll Express, they go to NWA, get over there. Inevitably, they're coming to the WWF. Just like they got Powers of Pain and still brought the Road Warriors, right? They got Demolition, Mm -hmm. still brought Powers of Pain. So you 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 definitely are going to have new people coming in and going with other people leaving, um, especially if it's hot. Like 87, mm-hmm. 88 Survivor Series, there's nobody on this fucking planet that won't tell you the two fucking matches that stole each one of those shows were the fucking 10 tag team fucking matches. Everyone yeah. still talks about it to this day, how awesome those two tag me- game conquistadors. Um, but you, you definitely, the problem with the Brain Busters is, yeah, that'd be awesome. To, 
but the Brain Busters and the Rock and Roll Express did fight. They also fought the Midnight Express, so it's not a dream match anymore. But it would be nice to see how they did it. No, technically, it technically, it w- technically, it would be because they did not like clash. You're thinking about right. '87, but we we said right. hypothetically these tag teams came '85, so they you definitely have the Brain Busters and the Rockers come in, and I think mm. the Rockers take on Midnight's, but they also take on the Rock and Roll Express because you got to have who's the real deal, who's who's the real, you know. It's obviously the Rock and Roll Express is number two. I think mm. I think just fucking filleted my own hand. I, I got a question. Um, in '88, were the Rougeos heels or baby faces at that time? They, they were, were more. They were morphing into. They were, they were morphing into heels, but that first right. ledge. So All American boy. I'm, I'm going. I'm going with the fabulous Rougeos, heel fabulous Rougeos, with uh, Frenchie Martin as their manager, um, mm-hmm. against the uh, against the um, the Rock and Roll Express. Yep. Um, that would be great in ring shit. Now for for the baby for um for the Straight Midnight Force. Express, mm, <sighs> can't yeah, probably Strike Force. No, yeah, the Strike. Yeah, I think Strike Force. That would be and Strike Force could be tag team champions at that time. So I I would like to see Midnight Express facing Strike Force for the tag team titles for that. Time. I wish Can't Have Connection <laughs> stayed together, but I, I me too. They were good, but Tom Zink was yeah. a dick. So <laughs> he's a dead <laughs> dick now. So oh. he's he's a dick died. What See, with, wait, dude, with, he was a fucking junkie for like ten years. With with dying. our bu- with our booking, the Midnight Express could have fought the Can-Am Connection and broke up the Can-Am Connection. You know, sure. Or storyboard ways, not the way that the Islanders did it. But again, neither here nor there. That's just my. Uh, That's what about the fucking Islanders. The Islanders, Islanders. Against, the Rock, against the Rock and Roll Express would have been a good money match too. Again, I'm just, I just want to. It's funny that you both disrespected the the tag team stylings of the Young Stallions. You didn't no. care about Paul Roma and Jim Powers. Dude, the, they were right. Two, they're, that's one of my favorite tags mm. of all time. If they are, why don't you say anything? Make because money. Because make they're money not going to exist if they got the Rock and Roll Express. Yes, they the would. WWE, every time they put two pretty boys together, the Can-Am Connection, the fucking Young Stallions, it was always to try to recreate what Rock and Roll Express right. did. If they have the Rock and Roll Express, they do not. Have, that's why I said Power and Glory. Bro, Power Roma and Glory was great. still happens. Huh? Power and Glory was fucking great. Right. It was great. That tag still team. happens because they're more of a Heart Foundation or a fucking Midnight Express than they are a Rock and Roll Express. Can, can I just say, if you guys ever did uh, another Untapped Potential um, like show or whatever, like the Islanders, Haku and Tama were so fucking good, man. They were oh, really, man. they were really great tag team. Like I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I, we, 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 of course, I have things in my mind of untapped potential. There's a there's a plethora of people in wrestling that is were untapped. They tag potential. champs? No, they they weren't. never won them. So Haku no. never had a title. Yeah, yeah. The he colossal with Andre. With, with Andre. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. The colossal <laughs> connection. And technically, he was also the king, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was, was he was he was interim king. That too. So let's put a. We, there's really nothing. By the way. Left. By the way I also like the Bob Orton Don Morocco versus Rock and Roll Express. I that's think a good tag team. That's th- those are ones that fucking ended dynamite, fucking chair to the back, running the ropes. But those guys, it's funny because remember back then those, they would always, those guys are those guys are paid assassins to that right. hurdle for them to for the Rock and Roll Express to get right. to the tag but team th- title. But team. that's what I was about to say. Stud and Bundy to me were never a tag team; they were stable mates. Mm-hmm. That basically teamed up so they could end Hogan and Andre, right, or Snuka, or whatever. Morocco and Orton were that to begin with, but then became a tag team. Yeah, to me, they they were legit. Adonis and Ventura were a tag team, right? They mm. they what were they called? The fucking New York Connection or some shit. The what what was it? The NYC Connection was it? Wait, you yeah, talking yeah. about you talking about Adonis and Ventura? No, yeah. no, the East East West Connection. connection. Yeah. yeah. No, wasn't that Murdoch in in, in... Murdoch and uh, Adonis never had a name. They were just Murdoch and Adonis. Yeah, but East Adonis West and West. Ventura were the East West. Time out, time out, time out, time out. I'm th- when 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 Adrian Adonis was a tag team wrestler and he was a tag team champion with mm-hmm. who was it with? It was with Dick, Dick Murdoch. Murdoch. But they never that had was a tag the team. East West. That wasn't the East West Coast connection. No, it was Ventura and, and Adonis. Really? Because mm-hmm. Ventura was from California and he was from New York. They were the East West connection. Mm. Murdoch's from the fucking south. It would have it would it would have been like the uh, southeast connection. 
Right. That's what it would have been, but neither. Yeah, I, I remember Adonis with the fucking dog collar, and he was yeah. dressed like a biker. Yeah, back in the day. Who, but they never, was, but they never had a tag team name. Who was it? That Dick Slater was it? Dick Slater and Dick Murdoch were a tag team in NWA. <laughs> Probably. Or I was it Slater so. and Funk? No, it was. Well, no, it was actually, Slater and Murdoch. It was Slater and Bunkhouse Buck. You're talking about in the '90s, but it was Slater and Dick Murdoch in the '80s. Sometimes. Yeah, they, that's what I'm uh, talking uh, about. Slater and Murdoch had a good run as a tag team in the '80s. Maybe in, maybe in UWF, maybe in UWF, maybe th- that area, but I don't remember them then in the Dick NWA. Was someone else then. I just remember them Dick, fighting for the U.S. title, the world tag team Dick, title. Dick Slater, I Dick it was Slater Dick, was Terry a, Funk and Dick Slater. Mm-mm. Dick Slater was a serviceable, serviceable hand, like you say, T.W., but it was not him and Funk. Trust me. <clears throat> Trust the professor on that one. But anyway, I, you said I, everything I, we needed. We, you can Google it, but it, I know what no, I'm doing. I said I trust it. Meta. Oh, Bella Meta. Hey. Thank you very much. But anyway, let's put a bow on all this. I'm going to go with Big Ray first here because, again, let's go back to the, the feud of feuds because, again, most likely would we are, we're kind of always booking Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express. So we already know that they might trade off the tag team title scenes and all that stuff. But what would be Big Ray's, I guess, would Big Ray want to use the scaffold match concept in the WWF? Or do you does Big Ray have a great blow off? For the Midnight and the Rock and Roll Express in the WWF. If we're talking the 1980s, immediately, immediately, the first thing I thought of was, was a, their blow off being a steel cage match. The blue cage. Uh, sure, the big blue cage tag team. Um, and then you know they amend they um, they would amend the uh, the rules where you can win by either escaping over the top or through the through the door or a pinfall. You know what I'm saying? Like people in the East Coast weren't used to. I remember when I was a kid and I was watching NWA wrestling. And I and I saw people going for pins in the ring. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Like, because I was used to people climbing over the cage. I think it would have been for the New York crowd, for the East Coast crowd who weren't used to that that Southern wrestling, where you can you know actually have a pinfall in the ring. I think that would have been cool. Um, a, a, a big blow off between those two in the steel cage match. Yeah, the, it could be the big blue cage or or regular cage, but I think it, it's the '80s. Big blue cage goes um, and. And if you, if, I think you're gonna ask me this question: Who who gets like kind of the upper hand between the two tag teams eventually? Mm-hmm. I think eventually is always the good guy. You know, it, it, you know, in movies and in, in TV, pro wrestling, eventually the bad guys win, win, win. But when it's all said and done, the good guys get the upper hand. So, but I I, I really think, and I know we're tying a bow on this. I really think both tag teams would have been, they would have been a top a top five tag team for the entire duration of however long they were there. I, I think they were both good, especially if they stuck with Jim Cornette staying their manager. Maybe the Rock and Roll Express could have, you know, gone away and maybe not had a manager. Who knows? Maybe the Rock and Roll Express turned heel, you know, down the line. And maybe maybe uh, you have like, a, what's his name? Um, Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart be their manager for some time. Like, you don't know how it works out. Mm-hmm. But I could have seen them also turn heel and be bad guys too, so um, it could have worked. Let me, either let, me way. let me let me put a curveball on your big blue steel cage match, and then I'll go to TW. Probably will agree with this. What a venue! What an event! Where no. would this blow off be in Big Ray's perfect vision of this? He's thinking. He's thinking. Tommy's thinking. No, no, Big Ray. I want you to answer your question. Oh, uh, oh you want me? Yeah. Oh, I thought what you were looking at No, I know TW probably will have the. He already knows his, his idea is the big blue cage. I just want Big Ray's venue event. Where would the eighty eight go off? Eighty eight. Um, I mean it's 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 easy to say, it's easy to say uh, WrestleMania, but I, I would have done it. It's eighty eight. Um, a match of that magnitude, I think, would have been great during the uh, SummerSlam. You know that that was the uh, the Macho Man uh, marriage, right, to Elizabeth and everything. No, no, that's not. No, going. my bad. Oh, you know you couldn't have done it there because you already had a big tag team match with Hogan and uh, who was it? It was it was Zeus and Macho, right? Versus Hogan and, and Beefcake. That's eighty nine. Yes, SummerSlam eighty nine. All right, so in eighty eight, I would have, I would have, I would have done it there. I would have done it in SummerSlam nineteen eighty. It's your, it's your choice. I'm not saying yeah. you're right or wrong. It's just SummerSlam eighty eight would have been I, your your perfect venue for the blow off between the Rock and Roll Express and Midnight Express. What was the main event of SummerSlam eighty eight? Off, I can't remember. Hogan, Savage, Zeus, or TBS. So what was that? Mega so, power, mega bucks. So I would have, you know what, SummerSlam, Great I would have booked. 
I would have it was I would have I would have booked that that event to be like a big tag team event, man. Like I would have right. since the main event was a tag team, I would have had like really be great, fucking pulling on fucking Vince's fucking. Oh, well, I know, but fuck, fuck that bastard. Um, uh, fuck that old man. Uh, I I, I would have done it differently, but I would have had like some of the great, like even a tag team tournament or something like that. But definitely the blow off would have happened either summer. I think it's too easy to say. Oh, it happens at WrestleMania. Of course, it happens at WrestleMania. If if anything of that magnitude, then I guess it would have to have been WrestleMania. But I would have booked it at SummerSlam. Okay, TW. The same question. Where would be the perfect venue, the perfect event for the blow off between the Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express? Because of what SummerSlam '88 was, I wouldn't want it there. Otherwise, I would pick SummerSlam. Because mm-hmm. here's my ending. It's the Blue Cage. There are no pinfalls or submissions. It is climb out or okay. fucking climb over. You know, Mm -hmm. climb out the door, climb over. And I think what better way to give the rub to the Rock and Roll Express than to have Ricky and Robert about to walk out this cage together because they fucking won, but Big Bubba stops them. And then who comes out to save them, get Big Bubba out of the fucking picture, and then they fucking climb over the top. Then Hulk Hogan to come out and make the save, the dump Bubba. And then the Rock and Roll Express climb over the top, and then fucking all three of them rip shirts off and fuck. So I would make it either a Saturday night's main event or one of those special Saturday night main events that are live on fucking Friday night. Where oh, you mean you mean the Friday main event one, that special right. NBC one that they like did. a special one that all eyes are watching, and Hogan's not on the show, so he's a bigger surprise for just being there, and comes out neutralizes Bubba, and then the Rock and Roll Express win that way. <clears throat> it, it it is funny, especially with TW. It elevates Bubba too. You you know where I would have done it? Where? Where? You might laugh. But WrestleFest? Just, Wrestlefest eighty eight. WrestleFest eighty eight. We, yeah. we already had the blue cage main event with Hogan True. and Andre. <laughs> you put you still have the the blue cage there. It's in front of twenty six thousand people, and that would have been the antithesis reflection nights to either have it either well Coliseum Home Video would have had that. Mm-hmm first edition ready like in like two weeks or that would have been a special pay-per-view event right there for people to pay maybe 1995 at that time or something like that or WrestleFest 89 that oh, would have yeah been, that would have been a blueprint to at least do another event for Vince McMahon and just keep like we were talking about TW remember the SummerSlam tour stadium to a pay-per-view what a way to start the Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express blue cage event the WrestleFest would have been a tradition to blow off like that. I just saying that would have worked in, in my humble opinion. But I do like your main event concept because when NBC and WWF had that relationship to give them that eight Ooh. o'clock prime time slot, just like they did with Hogan and Andre for the and main you, event. You'd one. be making the Rock and Roll Express, by had, but but Hogan can't be on the card because then it just it's no. You he, could have him because right, thirty if million he wrestles he, later. Then why wouldn't Big Bubba come out and cost him? No, no, because so again, like, remember. Let's say hypothetically, the hold your thought, right? I just wanted the answer. Okay, good, good. Hypothetically, remember main event eighty eight when Hogan lost the title. He started the match. Right. So have him so in the end, match and then right. Rock and Roll end it. That's what I'm talking about. That you have you're pissed off in the beginning, but at the end you're happy with the Rock yeah. and Roll Express winning in the blue cage. So go ahead, Ray. I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say that that it it's a full circle moment because we we spoke about how oh I spoke about anyway how that they should have booked the debut of these two factions of these two tag teams going at it at Saturday night's main event. Full circle, brother. You you the big blow off Saturday night's main event, man. I think that I think forget about SummerSlam. Live, Saturday night's main a event. live one, not necessarily. Yeah, a live, yeah. sure, absolutely, a live Saturday night's main event, a special. Where everyone's NBC watching, special. and they're like, "Who the fuck are these little motherfuckers?" What? A, and Hulk Hogan's at, their friend? Fucking now they're selling special, merch immediately. Listen, listen, at a special 9 p.m. start time, nine, you know, okay. nine, nine to nine to eleven or whatever it be, whatever it would be at that time, or maybe ten to 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 midnight or whatever it would have been at that time. So, well, that no, no, that that's the problem. Cool. Prime time is eight to ten. So you got to do it. Eight to ten. Yeah. Watching. Yeah. You got to sure, do it. Everyone's watching. Hogan starts off at eight. Dismantles Andre. Fuck gets rid of him. You think he's gone home? He's already showering, drinking beers, and then the Rock and Roll Express are getting hosed, and Hogan comes and saves the day. And that's reflection. That's why what ifs are so special and so good because Fuck. nobody's wrong. It's just Fuck, the, man. This, this has got me Jones and for it to happen, but we had to find right? a time machine. <laughs> you know man. what? 
TW, I know you're already you're friends with Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson. So just share this episode so this Ricky way they Doyle can Doyle is. So they can get, you know, they can, you know, book this for an armory this coming weekend. They can well, do unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, once again, this is why I didn't do it with Magnum TA. A couple Stan of us Lane are talking shit about Robert Gibson. I'm not sure I want to be the one I'm, to say. I'm just saying. Watch show. Stan Lane and Dennis Conley against yes, the Rock and Roll Express. That book it for this weekend. But anyway, share this. It doesn't matter. We love you, Robert Gibson. We mm-hmm. love you, Dennis Condry. We love you, Stan Lane. I know. I, I don't know if I can speak for both of you guys, but I think I can. Okay. I especially loved tag team wrestling growing up, so I never I understood why Vince didn't. I think tag team wrestling is what got me. Like Hogan got me in the door, but Rock and Rolls or not Rock and Roll, but the Bulldogs and 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 even the Heart Foundation is heels that chased the Bulldogs around. Then when I saw the Rock and, or the Midnight Rockers in mm-hmm. AWA, because for some reason I could watch that but couldn't watch NWA. But tag team wrestling has always been, and I ended up being a tag team wrestler, which wasn't my goal when I got in there. It just for whatever reason I got put with one and. It, it just it just all came back to me. All the shit that I watched, some of my favorite shit is the Ooh. Rockers versus the Brain Busters. They had <laughs> some awesome matches. <laughs> so for me, this, oh, for sure, Rick, Ricky and Robert are the reason we have everyone else. I, I know the wow. Road Warriors are huge. That's, that's why they're better than the Rockers. Right. That's no, all I'm no, just saying. They might be first, but sometimes the student passes the teacher. But mm-hmm. Ricky and Robert are the reason people saw money in it. And Again, the Road Warriors were awesome, but they were more of that Andre the Giant, and no offense, midgets, where they were an attraction. You weren't necessarily to see, there to see them wrestle. They squashed people like Goldberg did. No, Ricky and I, Robert I you. made I you, you feel it. I they made you feel that shit. Understand. And Big Ray, me and, me and Professor talk about it. To me, the three greatest sellers of all time are Ricky Morton, Ricky the Dragon Steve Steve and Daniel Bryan. Those three guys are the mm-hmm. absolute they make you fucking feel their pain when they're in there, and they also make you feel their joy when they make the comeback. I thought Tito Santana was a pretty good seller, too. Yeah, he was all right. He was, all right. But he was a big dude. These guys are all little dudes, and you just feel like they're just getting just bullied and mercifully beaten. And with that being said, Reflectionites, we close on this special What If Edition of the PWR Podcast here at the High Mean Media Group at PyBeam.com. With special guest, executive producer extraordinaire, Big Ray Hernandez. So, Ray, you are our guest. Give out your socials and let them know where they can see you. And hopefully, TW will join in on one of those goddamn shows Maybe. because I know you're going to give me that's goddamn this. number 407 just from tonight. Mm-hmm. Maybe one day. Um, listen, it's very simple, guys. You can find me on all social media at Big Ray Hernandez on TikTok, on Instagram, on freaking twitter uh on facebook it's raymond big ray hernandez and also you can watch me live am i hearing my feedback you can watch me live every single wednesday at 11 a.m subscribe to hami media group on youtube.com we're gonna have a whole bunch of really cool shows there we're gonna be changing the format of certain things moving forward there's gonna be a lot more content a lot um we're gonna condense aew shows it's gonna be a lot of cool stuff coming up so check that out we have a lot of shorts a lot of other things so if you guys don't mind like i said spread the word subscribe even if you don't watch just subscribe and hit the bell just do us the favor man we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers so again uh and also it's gonna be me and jimmy t every monday uh, i'm sorry every tuesday morning at 10 a.m eastern standard time we're going to be breaking down Monday Night Raw for the night before, and the show is called I Like It Raw. So uh, check that out. It's going to start. Actually, um, today is the 20th, the 27th. So tune in for that. Well, you just let them behind the fourth wall. What's that? You just let them behind the fourth wall. We don't ever tell them what day we record. Oh. They already know. They kind of know. That we're, I've always been transparent that we always record early to get the weekend release. It's, so. it's it's the fifteenth, whatever. But um, but yeah, guys. So so please, uh, so, like I said, I'm gonna reemphasize: subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to youtubecom backslash Hameen Media Group group. And uh, I appreciate it, guys. This was fun. This was really fucking cool. It's been a long time coming, and uh, I appreciate you too. And I always say this: uh, that this is like. Well, no, this is not like this is my favorite podcast. I always said that even if I stopped doing podcasts, I would still produce this one because I genuinely feel that Tommy and the professor have the best show on all of I, I, I cannot not listen to this. And Tommy sometimes asks, does Ray listen to? Yeah, I listen to the show. You should fucking know I listen to the show every fucking week. 
I produce it and I save it for Sunday night. Every single week I listen to it. So I appreciate you guys and I love you both. And I can't wait to watch the Yankees uh, destroy the Pittsburgh uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, what was it? I was going to say Penguins, the Pirates. Uh, when we come, I, they can destroy all of Pittsburgh. I'll be cheering right next year. Very good. So thank you guys for having me on. That was it was really cool, man. Thank you. Yeah. Take, take it home with your socials. All right, the Pro Wrestling Coalition Network on probation, but they're at PWC Network at Podbean.com, as is Hami Media Group at Podbean.com and ChannelAttitude.com. Ray, are they still there? Yeah, ChannelAttitude.com. Okay. Yep. And then our show's on the X at PW Reflection. Uh, Ray, you already gave all yours, and then my Instagram and jeez, uh, what is it? TikTok at Tommy Wonder Nineteen. Mm-hmm. You actually Snapchat. Me? Like I know, Jeez. I'm off, I'm thrown off for not doing big rays. So uh, at Tommy Wonder Nineteen on X and Instagram, and then Snapchat is Number Wonder, Facebook.com backslash Tommy Wonder, and then my other X and TikTok are at the Tommy Wonder. And Big Vito and Noel can be found at the Big Vito brand on TikTok. And you can watch the early release of the reflection video sometimes at Big Ray Hernandez. No, all the time. All the time. I always put a, it's, it's going to be up, depending on when we're recording this uh, in time and space. It may be up tonight if tonight is tonight. I don't, is tonight tonight? <laughs> I don't know if tonight. Oh, but by the way. What? What do you want from my life? What? Brian, Steamboat, and Morton are the greatest sellers of all time. The greatest bumpers of all time are Shawn Michaels and Mr. Perfect. Two yeah, different Perfect. Things. I would say perfect, yeah. Oh, Michaels was a fucking bumping. He was a pinball. We're not, we're not mm. doing the PWR o- overtime. I'm not. I'm not getting paid for this yeah. shit. Right, yeah, I'm just smart, trying to end the show. But anyway, you can find me on my extra at PWL so PRF. That's PWL so prof. And if this gets uploaded by Eight Track Brown, depending on copyright strikes, we don't know. Again, I, you know, my money says no. You can you can find it on the PWL so YouTube networks. Follow my brothers in arms, Billy Ray Valentine, in the Wednesday locker room at Obi One. You know me, and of course. 8-Track Brown, the king of the reactions at the number 8, TRAC Brown. What are we going to do next week, guys? I don't know. Maybe episodic. Maybe a spotlight. Maybe a robberies. Maybe we'll do a movies. Can't do another what if. Maybe I might do a what if. I think Josh Wolver gave me a what if idea, but I might save that for in two weeks. Who knows? But anyway, neither here nor there. With that being said, I'm the professor. That's Mr. Wonderful, Dumb Dumb Doing it its own, the Iron Stomach One, Tommy Wonder, and executive producer extraordinaire, Big Ray Hernandez saying good night. And we'll see you next time here at the PWR Podcast at the How Me Media Group at Podbean.com. And what you gonna do? No fireworks now this time. You know what to do with those thumbs, right? Yes. She said, Ramble, 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 Ramble.